Hello everyone and welcome back to more Mystic Destinies. We are back for more Hikaru Book 2 Reflections, except this time around we are just starting on Return to the Present, Cosmos of the Last Sorceress. So we have finished up on the last on the last episode with Cosmos of the the Demigod where we um we went to the temple with yeah, we we went to the temple with Sienna, Sienna, and then she did her thing, and then during her thing she, at the temple, uh, what's it called? Eh, Shizuka, Shizuka and Hikaru, no, Shizuka brought up the fact that um, Stuneka was going on a rampage currently, and then of course Hana picked up on that and was like, oh, this is probably around the time where it's what Hikaru did that pissed off, you know, Stuneka so badly that, you know, she, she's coming after him in the present time. So she, yeah, so uh, Shizuka basically explained how Suneka's going on a rampage in the village, it's like the news has traveled, and Hikaru's like, oh damn, well, we're the only ones who are capable of stopping her kind of thing, or, you know, who are, or who are brave enough to actually do something about it, even though Shizuka's kind of like, eh, I don't know, because she's a goddess, she's pretty strong, so I don't know much of if we stand a chance, but let's go and try. But Hikaru's like, no, we're gonna try, kind of thing. So, of course, we're like, okay, so what about us, kind of thing, and Shizuka's like, well, if you want to help along, just you know just help wherever you feel comfortable in helping kind of thing so that's why we decided on we didn't decide we actually no he kind of kind of like gave a half truth to Sienna about the matter because originally he was saying how we oh we originally we were supposed to spend more time in the village but something came up and so we got to leave kind of thing and Sienna's kind of like okay fine so we, we go, we kind of travel back, we camped out for the night because it was getting too dark. We told some ghost stories about the Goshu Gasha Dokuro, but nothing happened anyways. But during that time of night, we we couldn't sleep because of the fucking ghost, the fucking big ass like skeleton monster that can eat us and shit. So uh, she sees that Shizuka is keeping watch and that she couldn't sleep, so we join her. And we basically, I think, end up spilling the enti our entire story to Shizuka about the truth of her being our mother and what she did and what her present what her future self did to us to get us to for us to get powers of course the pres uh that shizuka during that time felt super bad she was like oh my god like i can't believe i did that to you i'm so sorry but like if you know you know knowing knowing you right now and stuff and blah 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 but it's like if if this is you know if this will help you in that certain way then i guess i have to do it in the future i'm not about to change what's gonna happen so then afterwards after our exchange in that story shizuka tells her story of how she she ba well it's basically the same story that hikaru told us about the founding of hagiwara university so it's basically her and how she she got married off to somebody she was in the family of other brothers she's the only daughter she got married off to a samurai and then her powers awakened and her husband at that time I oh, know tried to kill her but she she ran off and then you know her father covered for her saying that oh yeah he killed her and her body is down the river now and can't be found and that's why she ran away from that's how she ran away from home and has been alone ever since kind of thing and also how she gained her immortality which is like she was in a near-death situation with a, while traveling with a friend of hers and then you know in in um in the process of trying to save herself, she ends up accidentally cursing herself. So yeah, that's that sucked. So yeah, we felt really super sorry for her. For her, we had a very bonding moment. We we're like, okay, maybe this. And then she's because like, okay, maybe this time for now, can I be? Can you call me mother? Can I be your mother and give you the love that you didn't you didn't get in the future? So it's like, yeah, we're like we're touched by that. So we go, we drop Sienna back, said our goodbyes, off we went to go find Suneka and the plan was is that we were going to lure her to this cave that has this drop off point that nobody is aware of that kept dying because of that they kept dying and nobody came out of the cave so we were supposed to trap her and lure her to that cave telling her that the that the killers of her lover is there and to trap her there and to perform the sealing ritual that Shizuka is steadying up on so we go there we kind of like we're milling about that the area and we had a talk with Hikaru of how like you know oh um you know, I, I forgot, like, we had a very touching moment kind of thing with Hikaru before the actual big thing happened and how, like, he, he really admires us and how we admire him for being so strong and blah blah blah, a lot of complimenting going on. And he eventually gives us his remaining soul pieces to us because he was like, originally, I didn't trust you and that's why I didn't give them to you straight away. And I didn't even contact my mother to ask her how to do it because I didn't trust you enough, but, you know, I feel sorry for that. But we're like, no, it's fine, but we got the soul pieces now. But then afterwards, soon afterwards, 
Whispers, we Seneca is in the cave, we rush off to the cave, Shizuka's there, and of course Hikaru is the one who's dealing with the fighting and we're on the defensive with Shizuka as she's preparing the spell. And then after she's completed the spell, and Hikaru's trying to pin down Seneca, but of course he gets, that means that he got involved with a friendly fire and he ends up getting sealed away with Seneca, and that's how, that's the revelation, or at least that's what I think it is, that, um, that, that's how, uh, Hikaru manages to live up to like 500 years is because he's been sealed away with Suneka and possibly the only reason why Suneka got out in the future was because of was because of Hikaru as well. So yeah. So that was a very sad moment. We couldn't do anything about it. Shizuka ends up leading us out of the cave and we said our goodbyes to her. And that was basically it. So that's why we are coming back. Galen pulled us back here into the realm, into his realm, and we're back in the present now. So yes, yeah, so this time we we going yeah, so we're gonna continue on the story. We're gonna continue on the next part. So this time when I come back to the chaos realm, I'm suspended in air for a moment. I thought Suneka is here with us because the last time she was having tea with Galen. And poor Haruka was in the middle of it all. So, but instead of dropping gently to the ground, I sick. But instead of dropping gently to the ground, I sink straight down to the floor. What the hell? What's wrong with me? Uh, why can't I stand? Am I? Do I not have a body? <laughs> why am I getting so emotional? Oh, oh no no no! I thought I I thought I physically sank down to the ground like through it like why the ground melting? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just never mind. Yeah, she just she's just tired and weak and emotional because of what happened with Hikaru. So okay, so it's not like I didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, still, tears trickled down my face and caring of my logic. I don't see Galen or Haruka, and frankly, I don't care right now. Yeah, Hikaru, I want to see Hikaru. Well, he he should be floating asleep over there. Uh, it's the same Hikaru I just lost, right? Should be. Uh, even if he doesn't remember me, I stand up and look up. I stand up and look for his floating form. My eyes immediately spot him together with Haruka. So, uh, yeah, I dash over to the two. What's happening? I stare into Hikaru's face before finally noticing Haruka's expression. What's wrong, girl? Haruka, what's the matter? Yeah. Oh, Hana, I'm so glad you're back. Yes. The goddess unexpectedly gives me a tight hug. Why were you worried about me? It's Hikaru. He won't wake up. Oh, what the hell? Why not? Even though I summoned the box to me and placed in the last soul fragments, you retreat. Oh, so that's where the box went. Cause like, you know, as soon as we summoned the box to collect the soul pieces, it like completely disappeared from us. We're like, what the hell? That didn't happen before. Okay, so that's where it went. Okay. What? What do you mean? So that was you. Wait, what do you mean he won't wake up? Yeah. What? Uh, I look at Hikaru's sleeping face and a sickening dread grips my core. I understand her perfectly well, I just don't want to. Have I failed? Yeah, what the- I... A sob rips through the goddess before she can speak. What? For the third time today, I find my legs giving up before me. Hikaru, Hikaru, you trusted in me and I... Large fat drops of water fall from my eyes onto my clenched hands. Haruka begins wringing her hands and pacing around Hikaru's body. This- this can't be right. Yeah, what the hell, man? This, this is- that's bullshit! He- he isn't supposed to die, not like this. This- this is a natural. It's not- how can this be- how can this be order? How can this be right? Uh, I'm too numb to even properly process Haruka's words, much less respond to them. I'm- I'm sorry, I should've- uh, I should've saved him back then. Uh, I shouldn't have let him get sealed. I'm sorry. Really? She jerks her head around and looks towards somewhere else. Uh, looks towards somewhere else while still wringing her hands. But I can't stop staring at Hikaru. So was I not supposed to do that? What? I thought it was meant to happen. Like, Galen, please come. Okay. So the god walks up to us, slowly materializing as if he walked out of some invisible mist. His eyes momentarily flip to me before landing on the distressed Haruka. Yes. I need you to fix this. Please, please fix this. Every word the goddess says sounds like a struggle to get out. You, this isn't right. You can, can fix not right things. <laughs> yes, of course. Can't you? Yeah, please. Uh, I, I know it's wrong, but you, you have to. 
I can't lose my only son like this. Hey, man, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. Of course not. Please, please. But so did so did Takumi. Okay, girl. I tried and I got deleted. So I don't know. I don't know. This seems a little unfair, but okay, whatever. Please, Galen. Yes, I finally look up at Haruka and see all the anger and pain in her eyes. She's normally such a gentle goddess, uh, so it hurts even more that she's been turned turned into this. Well, again, this is her only child. Be my, by my, by me. Oh, that. Why did I say my? By me, by my own failure to save her son. You're fully aware that what I bring back may not be the same Hikaru. He is not so insignificant that bringing him back would not affect anything. You know the potential consequences. She's like, I don't care. I want my son back. The universe be damned. Oh shit. Her voice turned, her soft voice turned into a ragged yell echoes through the empty coliseum. Do you really mean that, Windwalker? Oh. Uh, we turned to see Suneka approach, an inscrutable expression upon her face. Yes, yeah, Suneka, I was starting to miss you. I thought you, like, got bored and, like, went away. For the first time, it isn't fear that springs forth inside of me. It's hatred. Just pure, utter hatred. I, as I jump up and, in, and get in between her and Haruka, I feel my own powers destabilizing, my control on them loosening. You, what the hell are you doing here? Oh yeah, she... Girl, I thought you already knew. Like, she showed up way before you disappeared. Uh, but Suneka doesn't even acknowledge me. Her eyes are solely on Haruka. You would really... You would really forsake the entire universe just for your son? Yes. You, who has always followed the rules nearly perfectly. Aren't you being hypocritical? Of all people, how dare you speak to me? Oh no, she's getting mad. Haruka's voice takes on a distorted, echoing quality, quality, and I feel the hair on the back of my neck prickle. Intense winds begin blowing in what is normally a still in what is normally a still place. Haruka, she's mad. Don't, yeah. So the gentle little bunny has some fight in her. Not bad. I always thought you were too busy kissing divine ass or fucking around with humans too. Oh, <laughs> I managed to get out of the way just in time. I just narrowly avoid a huge gust of wind that blows Seneca across the Colosseum into a pillar. Damn! Mama is mad! She mad! Whole shit! You took him away! Everyone is hurting because of you. I... I won't let you get away with hurting Hikaru. Well, somebody starts, is starting to sound a lot like Seneca. <laughs> Seneca groans as she unearths herself from the pillar. I find myself in horror as I remember that Haruka is a goddess as well, however weak she may be compared to Suneka. I clench my fists and let my power surge through me as well. Okay, she wants to fight to avenge Hikaru. If this is all I can do now, then... Really? Okay, you're gonna back her up then. Ah, I guess. Okay. Alright. You just made your first and last mistake, weakling. Suneka quickly summons a much larger ball of light than I'd ever seen back in the cave. She immediately hurls it at, H at Haruka, though it's large enough to hit me as well. How, oh, girl? I, I can't stop something that strong this fast. Well, even if we didn't want to get involved, we are involved. <laughs> I don't even have time to close my eyes. Galen. But then the ball of light disappears in midair. Thanks, Galen. Now, now, I wouldn't interfere, but I can't let you do that. Suneka practically growls in rage at having her attack stopped. But then she moves but then she makes a move I couldn't predict. She goes for Hikaru, I'm pretty sure. Yes! She teleports right to Hikaru. No! I throw myself at his body, protectively covering his with my own. Again, everything seems to happen all at once. I see Galen raise his hand at the same time as as Suneka brings the whip of light down toward me. Oh. Oh. Oh? A bright light? Huh? I, did I actually get killed this time? Or no, I can't die. I hear Suneka's all too familiar scream of rage. I blink the spots away and Hikaru, you better be alive. Ah! <gasps> Whoa! It's Hikaru! Yes, Hikaru, you're in your demigod form. Wait, did you bring back Hikaru from the past? Because he's wearing his kimono. Hikaru stands in front of me in his god form, glowing with divine light and surrounded by winds. How? How are you alive? Uh, be before I can fully comprehend what the hell just happened, I have a strange sensation of shifting somehow. What? Of time, of time itself ceasing to exist. 
Oh, 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 are we in the cosmos? Yes, we are, because, <laughs> you know. I look around and realize that we're now in that place. The place I almost faded away into nothingness. Oh, okay, so the world between. The world in between? What? Suneka's realm, outside of time. The only people who exist here are me, Suneka, and... The god that I still can't believe is actually Hikaru. Heh. Heh, why, why are you smirking? The man actually smirks. He looked pretty pissed. I guess you're just not that good at, I guess you're just not good that good at murder? No, it's definitely Hikaru. An eerie calm suddenly overtakes Suneka as she gives a crazy lopsided grin. I'm so sorry. I promise. I'll do it right this time. Okay. Suneka creates countless light particles with her hands, each one seemingly moving at her will. The lights dance across her the lights dance around her before she pushes her hands out, directing the lights to shoot off at Hikaru as if they were missiles. Oh. Uh, Hikaru holds out his hand, uh, summoning a katana shaped sword of light. Okay. Uh, he deflects them by creating a gust of wind with a slash of his sword. He's like, what's this called? He Ah, that one guy from League of Legends. It's been so long since I played it. That's why I forgot his name. Forgot. Yasuo! Yes! He's like Yasuo. <laughs> What's that? <Asayo! laughs> Suneka laughs. We're in my realm now. Time and space itself bends to my will. Alright. Does a piece of half human trash like you really think you have any chance at all? I blink and Suneka is suddenly behind Hikaru with another whip of light. I instantly raise my hands, raising an invisible barrier with it. The goddess's whip comes down on my barrier and it collapses. Ouch. But her light whip dissipates on contact. Great. She looks at me for the first time, as if just noticing my presence. Yay! Yes! Player 3 has entered the game! I decidedly dis I a decidedly disgusted look appears on her face as if I were rotting garbage. I mean, I might as well be, in her eyes. He kind of turns around to look at me, smiling. I got your back! I got you! I, do I, don't I got you, babe, don't worry. Don't you worry. I get a sudden urge to cry, but I shove down the lump in my throat and raise my hands in a battle stance. Here we go! He does, because he's not alone. I know you probably brought me here just to watch him die again. But things are different this time. I'll save Hikaru this time, right? And just who are you exactly? At first, I did think you were Shizuka, but it's clear that I've insulted the witch. You're just a pathetic copy, aren't you? A fake of the real one. A, a fake of the real thing. Hey, now. I'm not going to lie, it hurts when she says that. Yeah. <laughs> but looking at Hikaru floating behind her, I remember his words from that night. I look back at Suneka. You want to know the name of the woman who's going to stop you? Fair enough. My name is Hana, and I am the last sorceress. <gasps> oh, so the last sorceress is us! Well, it makes sense, because, you know, Shizuka transferred her powers to us, which makes her e which makes her mortal, and us immortal, and with powers. Oh my god, I'm so... Yeah, I, did, I could I should have caught on to that. Oops. <laughs> Suneka frowns and starts to summon some kind of light. But Hikaru immediately slashes at her with his own light sword from behind, forcing her to jump back. I take the opportunity to send bolts of lightning down at her. But before I can but before I can, she's suddenly behind me. Oops. The, but the air around me goes crazy, turning into a cyclone that knocks Suneka away. Thanks! I glance at Hikaru and it's clear we've got each other's backs. Yes. I get it. She can warp space time, so we have to protect each other and try to keep her off guard or we're dead. Yes, it's terrifying to it's terrifying to see to say the least, but my own anger and determination to save Hikaru drown all that out. I can't help but think of Hikaru's crying face, or Hikaru's last words as he sacrificed himself to seal Suneka in the past. I won't mess up this time, I won't let him go. Alright. Hikaru quickly moves on in on Suneka, slashing at her with his sword. I begin to understand that this is the fight that could literally go on for eternity, them being gods and, mi and me being immortal. Yeah, so how? <laughs> Except that my body is still human, I still get tired. Okay. Suneka creates a sphere of light just as Hikaru's sword clashes down on her. Uh, with a strange clang, the two divine weapons clash against each other. The force of the impact sends Hikaru a few steps backward and Suneka's sphere to dissipate. Desperately, I rack my brains trying to think of some way to get, oh, to get out of this alive and hopefully without any missing limbs. Why? Why is she fighting us anyway? Why does she hate us so much? Right, girl? Is it just because she's insane? 
I don't know. Maybe she's really hurting still. <laughs> the goddess screams and pulls at the air, creating another sphere of light that she immediately throws at Hikaru. Oh my god, go for a wind wall. Come on. Wapeki! <laughs> Wapeki! I push my hands upwards, creating an ice barrier in front of Hikaru. The spear lodges itself into the ice, but it doesn't come close to going through it. Okay, that's good. Uh, before Suneka can react, I create a whip of fire and whip it at her. Whip it good. As it wraps around her, I pull, tightening it around her. No, she said she- No, she said we stopped her from avenging Tokyo. I guess I really did, now, but why was she killing humans anyway? Uh, she struggles against the fiery vine, and I see the orange flame slowly turn white. Oh! The whip turns from fire to light and dissipates in one brilliant flash of light. Oh, there goes my whip. My ears ring and my vision is blurred. I can, uh, I can hardly see anything in front of me other than a bright light heading towards me. Uh-oh! I quickly blink away the haziness to see a spear of light heading right, right for me. Oh, I rush to throw up a barrier. But even as I do, the spear goes right through it, stopping only a few centimeters from my face. Well, as long as it stops it from being- It stops it from impaling me, then I'm fine. It's good. Huh. Seneca happily cackles away and conjures up yet another spear, tossing it at me with unrestrained glee. Alright. So Hikari rushes forward and- Yeah, Hikari rushes forward and their weapons clash with that same strange clang. He knocks the spear out of the air and it flies somewhere off to the side. Uh, Hikaru, then cha uh, Hikaru then charges at Suneka. She conjures yet another spear, but Hikaru moves so fast that she only has time to block his attack. He pushes down on her and she jumps back, almost stumbling backwards. Uh, the two move in for another attack. Hikaru and Shizuka said he was, likely, he was likely killed by gods or with an artifact. Normal humans probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have that, so... Yeah, so who killed him? Coming up with an idea quickly, I decide to take a chance. Yeah, let's talk to her! <laughs> let's- let's attack her with words! <laughs> Suneka, what if I said I knew who killed Tokyo? Would you stop all this madness? Suneka pauses at the mention of Tokyo's name and Hikaru stops mid-attack. He instead holds his light sword defensively, I'm guessing he figured out what I'm doing. In a hoarse, shaking, and pained voice, Suneka points a finger at me. What? If you're fucking with me, you will die, witch. Well, ignoring her insult for the sake of our only chance, I continue. 500 years ago, after Tokyo was murdered, you killed humans. Why? I... I was... I was angry. The grief, yes. My... Anger. Seeing that she's beginning to lose her tenuous grip... Her, t her tenuous grip... Tenuous grip on her emotions, I quickly continue on. Can a human kill a god so easily, though? Yeah, was it a human? I don't think so. I, I don't know how it happened, but... Limply floating in mid-air, Suneka interrupts me in a hollow voice as if in a trance. Or maybe... Okay, the only possible way that a human could, po could kill uh, Tokyo was that they took advantage of his kindness because he was known to be so nice. And maybe it turns out that they, they did have an artifact that was capable of killing him. Maybe. Who knows? That's, what, that's my theory. But let, we're gonna find out anyways. Let's go. Let's go see. He went out. He went out to help them. I found him. Dead. Okay. A pool of his own blood. A divine knife. Oh, his eye. Humans surrounding him. Oh, Suneka's head falls as if all the life had drained out of her. She's completely silent and I find myself unable to speak. Really? Is that it? I, am I, was I right? Really? Huh. I can't see her face anymore. Her hair is covering it, but in a tiny voice she continues to speak. Why did he have to die? Yeah, well, I, you know what? Humans are shitty. I agree with you on that. He was so pure, so bright and beautiful. When he was happy, he radiated light. He was so, so kind. Everyone loved him. He didn't deserve it. Yeah, man, like who the hell? Like, you have to be a pretty shitty human being to just kill the type of god that he was. Like, damn. Wow, maybe you did deserve to die by Suneka's hands. I'm the horrible person. Yeah, I'm the horrible person. No one's ever really cared for me. Except him, my beautiful, precious love. It should have been me. When I felt like I had lost Hikaru so many times, I've only begun to comprehend the pain and despair that Suneka must, fe must feel. Yes. But even a fraction of that is too much to bear. That's when Hikaru's deep but gentle voice echoes through the space. I can't give you a clear answer, but you might have been deceived, goddess. 
Oh, the gods are a treacherous sort. It's more likely that they were the ones who took Tokyo away from you. Ah, maybe. Okay, so maybe it was the gods doing that gave them that that gave them the knife, the, the the humans the knife, the divine knife, in order to kill Tokyo. Maybe on some promise that they would become rich or some shit, or their wishes will come true or some other bullshit nonsense. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was the doing of a god who made it so that humans were the one who enact to you know put put it into action, kind of. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see. That can make sense as well. Yeah, huh? Suneka looks up now with tears streaming down her face. With yeah, with tears streaming from her face. She looks more like a hopeless little girl right now than a powerful goddess. Doesn't it make sense? Your reputation in the divine realm, you said it yourself. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, so maybe a god had it out for her and the only way to get to her was to kill her lover. Yes, that she cares so much about. Yes, okay, yeah. I'm getting more and more convinced of where this is going. That's why you chose to live in other timelines, isn't it? Instead of in that realm. Humans back then were terrified of gods. It's very li it's very unlikely they would have outright killed one. But other gods... Yes. Yes, you're right. Ah. Seneca's powers recede back into her, and I let out a sigh of relief. Those bastards. They've always had it out for me. I know part of it was because they were always jealous of my power. But that's such a petty reason to kill my love. Oh, you never... You, you, are, you will be surprised at just how petty people can be, let alone gods. Again, have you met a Greek god? <laughs> and in the end, that would mean his only crime was loving me. Yes, Tokyo was murdered because he dared to love a miserable person like me. We're at an impasse. Yeah, we're at, a, we're at an impasse. Impasse? I don't even know. Impasse. Yeah. Suneka has stopped, but... I find myself unable to just leave her like this, even if she would let us. Why don't we call Galen then? If anyone would be able to help you with these answers, it's him. Right? We can all figure it out together, with no killing and no people dying. Yes. Galen. Fine, I'll find out if you're really- I'll find out if you're telling the truth. Seneca takes a deep breath, uh, but when she calls out, her voice seems to lack all energy. Yo, emo grandpa, <laughs> I know you don't have anything else to do, so that means you're listening, right? Then just come here already. Seneca adds with a tired smile. I even left the back door open for you. Here you are. In the blink of an eye, Galen stands before her, wordlessly looking down at her tiny form. Hey, I got a question for you. And if I don't like the answer, well, you know what? You know what? I don't think I care anymore if you do kill me. I'm tired. Yeah, tired of fighting, tired of feeling like shit, tired of hurting people. Then speak, a oh weaver of time. <laughs> I need to know the truth. Who was it that killed Tokyo? I suspect it was the gods. Do you know of, do you know of anyone in the, in the divine realm that might have hated Suneka no Mikoto enough? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Galen tilts his head, his aura flaring so suddenly that I can barely stop myself from stumbling backwards. More than you might have guessed, it seems. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because given her reputation. But there are three in particular that seems to have left traces of their auras in the area where Tokyo was killed. But why didn't you say so already? This we could have we could have avoided all of this had you just told her like just even that. <laughs> like, I don't get it. Whatever, I feel like I guess it's part of that divine realm rule thing. So it is a little unusual for three gods to be anywhere near such an event as the murder scene of another god, no? Right? If you know who they are, just say it. Right? Galen looks back at Galen looks back at the tiny goddess who seems to be growing increasingly annoyed by the second. The trio is one you happen to know. Shall I summon them to you? Can we see them? Can we? A will we actually be able to see them? Cause I, I low key want to see who these killers are too. Like maybe is it somebody we know? Okay, so Suneka wordlessly snaps her fingers, bringing forth three cloaked figures in the middle of our odd little circle. Oh, I guess not. I guess it'll just be, yeah, generic. <laughs> no one we know. They all look at each other confu. They all look at each other and then around us in confusion. Oh, Demetrius, Soto, and Carabao. Huh. Three weakling sacks of shit. <laughs> it's honestly hard to get angry at such inconsequential maggots. 
You bitch. <laughs> You're still alive? Yes. Why have you summoned us here? Do you think we have time to waste? We were in the middle of a council vote. Well, your votes don't matter. Piff, yeah, yeah. You gods and your damn voting on your f on you and your you gods and your damn voting on every freaking thing. Yes. I know I shouldn't be surprised, but you have a lot of nerve for bugs that are going to be squashed. Most to ten most do tend to posture in these sort of situations. They immediately stiffen upon the gods' words and take a better look at the company around them. What is going on? Well, justice. <laughs> What's going on indeed? You're hanging out with the god killer now? Your preferences have managed to fall even lower. Ag, nope, shut the hell up. Seneca throws out a hand in Demetrius' hand, and Demetrius' hand go to his throat. Uh, the only god killer I'm talking to right now is you. You're the original god killer. What? You fucking heard me. You killed Tokyo, didn't you? All three of the gods cringe at the force of her words. Yeah. An explosion of power emanates from Seneca and through the gods, holding them all perfectly still. I try not to think about it, but I'd, be, but I'd been the victim of this once before when she'd stopped time. Yeah. Answer me. It seems like you've got your mind made up. So why should we answer you? If you, if you tell me why you did it, I might consider letting you go. Tch, you really think we'll believe that? Uh, what options do you have? You three are low tier gods. I think even I could take you in a fight. Just try it, freak. Oh, pfft. shut up. You have the honor. Of, sh shut up. You have the honor of speaking to me, so you damn well better pay attention. Yes, girl. You tell him, Seneca. <laughs> Okay, the hooded gods fall silent, and I feel thankful for the first time not to be the one, not to be on the receiving end of Seneca's wrath. Right? I will ask you once again: Why the hell did you kill Tokyo? Uh, because it would hurt you. Yeah, I figured. See, the level of pettiness some people are capable of. What? Yeah, basically, you wanted to know the answer, so we told you. You are nothing but trouble in the divine realm. Prancing around with your also special time magic? So disrespectful of everyone in the rules. Did you really think we, as self-respecting gods, would let that go? We thought we'd teach you a lesson you wouldn't forget. Punish that damn arrogant attitude of yours. Yes, it doesn't matter how weak you think we are. We're still your elder gods and we deserve, and we deserve respect. We knew you'd go nuts on the humans and break all the rules. We figured you'd get exiled. We would get exiled. Yeah. We figured you'd get exiled, or your godhood stripped, or killed. Whatever the council decided. Anything was better than spending thousands of years with your shitty attitude, playing jokes on everyone. Damn. The council was working on deciding what to do with you when the half-human and the sorceress sealed you away. Yep. Solved our problems for us, neat and tidy. Thanks for that, by the way. Shit. The god nods to Hikaru and I. Yeah. The gods. The god nods to Hikaru and I feel my fist tighten into a ball. You were just using everyone? And then you blamed the humans for it, yup. Suneka's voice is barely above a whisper when she finally speaks. Damn, that's, that's why Tokyo is gone? Because you were tired of me? Yeah, you're disgusting. How dare you call yourselves gods? I see some things never change, no matter the era. Yes. Suneka's head falls down to her chest, her hair covering her face. But she, but she snaps out. Ah, but she snaps out a hand, and upon clenching it, all three gods scream in agony. Galen casually strides closer to Seneca. He casts a single lazy glance at the screaming gods before turning his focus onto her. Simply wiping these three out of existence is a waste. Normally, I would let you do as you please, but in this case, we might have use. We might have a use for them. Really? To do what? Oh, are you gonna fix every timeline then? Yes, please. That would be great. Seneca doesn't change her position, but the god's screams echo through the dimension, throughout the dimension. Use them for what? They're fucking useless. A, a pr I propose a trade. Their lives for that of your lover. Oh. Eh, okay, that works as well, but like, I would really appreciate it if you like, fixed the whole timeline fuck up that I, I did to like, you know, try to bring Hikaru back, but you just, you just brought him back anyways <laughs> for me. Seneca's head snaps up and the god's screaming and the gods' screaming stops. Yeah. What? Ah, it might ah, it makes sense. A life for a life. 
But these guys, who knows what their fates will be? I can't say I'm comfortable with it, but it's not my place to judge here. Ah, uh, yes. Seneca floats to Galen and stares at him. Can you really do it, Galen? Can you really bring Tokyo back? Yes, a simple enough matter. With these three, it, with these three to even the scales, it will be easy enough. Oh, then please do it. Do whatever you need to do. Very well, come then. Oh, we will do what needs to be done. Galen turns to face us. As for you two, oh, well done. We will meet again soon. Really? Thank you, Galen. Okay, I nod along vigorously, realizing that I've come to have some sort of affection for this ancient god. Yes, thank you. I mean, I still feel pretty shitty about Takumi and, you know, Tatsuya and Cho, but like, okay. Galen raises his hands, his fingers poised to snap. Oh. Okay. Where? Okay, return to the present, Cosmo the Last Horses, final chapter. As I, uh, I should probably mention to you guys, I looked back on the section just to see where, how many chapters uh, they are and, you know, how long it, it can go on for. And basically it's this, the first, the first chapter, final chapter, and then the ending's either passionate or like something else. But yeah, basically four, four sections. So yeah, I'll probably separate it depending. But yeah, anyway, so I'm completely disoriented by the sudden change in scenery as well as feeling solid floor beneath me. I'm unsteady but manage not to fall. Hikaru's hand shoots out to grab my arm anyway. Oh, oh, are you okay? Yeah, oh yeah, just a little tired and confused. I can't believe I'm actually finally back here. Oh, meh, <laughs> me neither. Hikaru transforms back to into his normal self and I find myself on the verge of tears. This Hikaru, it feels like it's been ages since I've seen him. Well, I guess it has been. Ah, but he was unconscious the whole time. And those other Hikarus weren't him. He doesn't remember any of that stuff. Or maybe he does! You never know, he hasn't said anything yet. Pain shoots through my heart, but I'm happy too. And, and so relieved that I finally was able to save them. Mother? What? Oh, what you doing here? I realize there's another woman in the room. Another woman in the room, yes. She walks towards Hikaru with tears in her eyes, her arms outstretched. She's like, you're alive! <laughs> he meets her in, an in a hug and she doesn't let go. Hikaru, yes, this poor lady. I'm so glad you're alive. My heart squeezes painfully, but in a good way. Because the entire time I was fighting for Haruka too. Yes, yeah, so many emotions and I don't remember, I don't remember the last time I slept, or ate, or showered. I'd better sit down. <laughs> I manage to wallow my way over to the floor cushions and sink down. I sigh what's probably the deepest sigh of relief I've ever had in my life. Haruka spends a few moments examining Hikaru, uh, asking him if he's alright and checking him over while he insists that he is. Finally, Haruka looks at me. Hana, thank you. Yes. In the end, you were able to save him. Huh? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> I actually don't really know what happened in the end. Why Hikaru revived when he did? Yeah, right? That's simple. Okay, that's simple. Haruka giggles. What? Well, I figured it out anyway. Well, I figured it out anyway. Why? You had a piece of Hikaru's soul fragment within you. Did I? Really? Oh, damn, huh? What? Uh, how is that even possible? Hmm, I don't know. I guess because you were there when his soul, fra when his soul was fragmented, it attached to you. Oh. But I'm not Hikaru... I'm not Hikaru, so, yeah, but I'm not Hikaru is what she meant to say, not like something else, but yeah. So how could that happen? I'd say he bonded with you because your soul vibrates at a similar frequency as someone he cared about a lot. Oh, Shizuka, oh, right, of course he clinged to Shizuka, yeah, he had a bit of a crush on her. But now that I look, the, but now that I look at the two of you, I don't think that's it at all. I think when you tried to sacrifice yourself to protect Hikaru, it was Hikaru's will to protect you that released it. Oh, okay. His will to protect me? Huh. Haruka smiles and walks over to me. I scramble to get up and she gives me a tight hug. That's all, I That's all I'll say. I believe Hikaru knows the rest. Thank you so much. I can never repay either of you. But I promise, from now on, I'll watch over both of you. Oh, okay. I did it because he deserved it, that's all. Yeah. And thank you, but that sounds like a lot of work trying to watch two people- Trying to watch two people at a time. Haruka giggles again. I don't think it'll be as much of an effort as you think. Um. Haruka waves. Farewell, we'll speak again soon. Okay. With that, Haruka disappears in a blink of an eye. 
I'm left standing stunned and overwhelmed at everything she just said. Okay, well, uh, I guess time for your half. He kind of comes to stand next to me then, nearly giving me a heart attack with the intense look in his eyes. Hana, we need to talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. My heart pounding nervously, I force my wary self back down to the floor. The battle with Suneka and all the stress, I think it's finally hitting me. I'm gonna sleep for a long- I'm gonna sleep for a year after this. Like, honestly. On top of it, on top of it, I don't even know how to act with Hikaru after all this. I stare at his awkward eyes, a color- Ah! I stare across- Ah! Oh my god, I'm tripping up my words, sorry. I stare at his awkward eyes across the table and give a little smile. Back where- back where we left off, huh? Hikaru sighs and scratches his head. Yeah, I guess we are, thanks to you. Uh, so about that, uh, just how much do you know, or remember, of everything? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, actually. Do you remember everything? I remember everything. Yay! I figured! Okay, so anyways, okay, just a quick side note, you guys. You know that one time before this whole entire mess started, when he, like, pinned us against the wall and he was like, Oh my god, could you be or could you not be her? But you look so much like her. Like, at first, I had the feeling that, like, it might be Shizuka that he's referring to because of his attachment to her, obviously, as we saw. But also, it could be, it could be like that, that Howl's Moving Castle moment where, like, where, ah, uh, what's her? Oh, I forgot her. So Sophie, where Sophie was like, she traveled back into the past where Howell first swallowed and gave his heart to, um, to, what's his name again? I forgot his name too, to, uh, what, the little flame guy. I forgot his name. But anyways, yeah, where he gave his heart over to, to, um, the little flame demon. And then she was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save you by, you know, because his heart was extinguished on the threat to ex to getting extinguished in the future so she was like you know find me in the future before she like you know w was taken back to the present day so it, i had that that thought where it could be like that kind of moment where it's like hikaru kind of sort of remembered in that howl sort of way where it's like oh maybe it's her maybe it's that girl that i met in the past that you know i interacted with and that i i i went on this journey with in order to see to seal away suneka maybe this is her now in the, the present day because you know it'd be really confusing you know us in the present day look totally different from this whole kimono get up get up here right right like i don't know maybe i don't know that's just my theory but i think it, it might be the shizuka thing so yeah i remember everything you remember wait how yeah wait wait what how yeah you heard that you heard what my, my mother said you were carrying a piece of my soul within yours oh so it was like i was with you the whole time oh Oh, the shards the other Hikaru's held and the one you held. I remember everything that happened during those times. Oh, so they're like not only soul fragments, but they're like memory pieces. Makes sense. It's all kind of jumbled right now, but I think I got it. Everything. Oh my god. As I try to process all this, Hikaru leans over and grabs my hand. I stare down at his hand in shock as if it were some strange alien. He pulls on it a little and I'm tugged closer to him. Hugs! Hikaru takes advantage of this to whisper in my ear. I'm sorry. I know I haven't been good to you. My face is probably tomato red as I try to stammer out a reply, but Hikaru leans over to me to give leans over to give me a kiss on the cheek. Oh, oh you. I hope that we can start over and make new memories together. Oh, thank you for saving me. Oh, he leans back and gives me the cutest smile. Oh, look at you. Aren't you adorable? Oh my god, sudden heart attack. That's not fair. How can I say no to that? Right? I give his hand a squeeze, unable to express the depth of everything I'm feeling. I nod. Uh, I'd like that. But first, you should get some rest. Yes. If you don't mind, you can sleep in my room. I'll even leave the house. No, 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 no. Yeah. Who am I to kick you out of your own house? God. I mean, I spent a long time trying to save you. And I've gone through a lot of crazy things lately. I'd prefer it if you stayed here. I'd feel safer. But I don't think I'll make it home. Uh, but I don't, I don't think I'll make it home in this state anyway. So I'll sleep here. The thought of sleeping in Hikaru's bed makes me feel incredibly embarrassed. But then I remember that I essentially did that 500 years ago anyway. Right. Ooh, you have a very nice room. In the end, Hikaru shows me to his room and I climb in the bed, clothes and all. I don't care. He stands in the doorway watching me with a peaceful look in his eyes that I've never really seen before. I'll stand here till you go to sleep. Till you go sleep? Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, actually, could you just sit on the bed? Yeah, that'd make me feel kind of that'd make me feel kind of awkward if you just stood there. Oh, true. And you get really tired. Yeah, sure. Is is the lady killer really blushing? <laughs> I don't have much time to think anything else because the moment he kind of sits down near me, he grabs my hand. Oh, it all feels so warm and comfortable and safe that I instantly fall asleep. Well, that didn't take long. Well, I figured because damn, she's been on a journey, completely and utterly at peace for the first time in my life. Oh, oh. Final chapter, okay, I wonder if we get the passionate or the other ending. Here we go. So I might just finish the entire thing all in one go right here, right now, you guys. Oh my god. Oh, except for... Actually, no, yeah. Let's just let's go on. Let's do this. It's the day after he cut her and I returned to our own timeline. After everything was said and done, it felt like we had, be but we had been together for ages. Maybe it's because for a short time our souls were together, but... Even though I didn't admit it, I didn't want to be apart from Hikaru just yet. And it didn't seem like he wanted to be part with to part with me either. Oh. So after I slept for nearly an entire day and woke up a, woke up this evening, he kind of said he'd take me to a small cafe in Choa. He told me that he likes to frequent it anytime he needs to. He needs a late breakfast or early dinner. Uh, we stopped by my place so I could finally change out of that damn kimono and came here. Yes, and grab my glasses because I was blind the entire time. So as I took my seat, I had a I had a look around, taking in the atmosphere of the place. Surprisingly, it's not blue sky. <laughs> it's a very quaint and cozy. It's very quaint and cozy. I'm almost surprised Hikaru comes to a place like this. Unlike Galen or Chisaki's, it's it Chisaki. I haven't really had time to process everything or anything, and it's confusing to me just to think that Chisaki is alive here. But yeah, <laughs> possibly dead in some other timeline. I have to ask Alan how to fix everything I did. Even thinking about it makes me worry, though. Or maybe, you know, thanks to Galen bringing back Tokyo and Seneca, maybe Seneca would have a change of heart and be like, Hey, Tokyo, I've done some pretty fucked up shit when you were dead because I was hella mad, but you know what? I'm gonna make it up to- I'm gonna redeem myself by fixing the other timelines. Maybe. Maybe that might happen. Who knows? I'm hoping that will happen because that'd be really sweet of her. Are you okay, Hana? Yes, Hana. I haven't gotten used to him calling me that. Yeah, it's just none of this shit actually feels real. Oh yeah, cause he used to call me Lee. Yes, he went through. You went through a lot of. You went through a lot in a short period of time. Yeah, no shit. And being in other realms is disorienting for humans, especially ones outside of time. Yeah, I hope it sinks in soon. Uh, I realize how exhausted I am at, as I begin to eat. Everything since Suneka popped up has been so emotionally draining that I feel down about. I feel down about. Well, everything, yes. And this feels like such a shallow thing to worry about after all this happened, but. I do wonder just what Hikaru and I are exactly. Are exactly. Are we still just teacher and student? Oh, oh yeah, she's like, what if, what's, what, where are we now? Are we friends? Or. I look at Hikaru, who seems to currently be too preoccupied with his meal to notice me. I fight back the urge to sigh. There's still a lot I don't know about him. Like about his family, and what happened in between the time he woke up from being sealed and now. Right, like how did you even get out? I know there's a time in the future to learn, but I'm curious. I want to know while I can. Especially if- Especially if we- If we- If he goes back to treating me like he did before, yes. I'm scared that I'll wake up and this will all have been a dream. That I'll just be back in that place. Hikaru? Huh? Yes, I need to know. Hikaru looks up from his food mid-bite. I can't help but smile at how unexpectedly childish he looks. It's okay to call you that, right? Uh, I told you once before. I told you once before it was. That still holds true. Aw. Okay, then. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, well, hoping, that you could tell me more about yourself? Hikaru puts down the fork. I'm not that interesting, but... What do you want to know? Well, I want to know about your school days at Hagi Hagiwara. What was it like starting life in this time period? My school days. Huh, well, Galen helped me. W well, Galen helped me getting helped me get into Hagiwara. Oh, really? Imagine how it felt learning that Lady Shizuka was a patron of the school. Oh yeah, I got a job on campus and began studying to be a professor. I didn't know what else to do, but I enjoyed learning about history I had missed. I felt guilty because of it. I wasn't around to help those people. Oh well, it's not- yeah. So I thought the least I could do was learn what happened while I slept. 
Oh, you slept. Well, that's good. <laughs> you didn't have to deal with, you know, crazy Suneka and her, her, her insanity. <laughs> then I could pass. Then I could pass down the knowledge of those mistakes to a to a new generation. I also wanted to help people. Plus the pay. Plus the pay as a magic professor is pretty high. Oh, okay. Hikaru laughs. Well, yeah. So it was natural for me to dual major and study that as well. I worked hard on adjusting to the dialect difference and technology here. Uh, though it was always a struggle for me, I think I got the hang of it. Yeah, I mean, you seem to be doing pretty well. Other than that, I was pretty popular around campus, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> any divine being's aura immediately attracts other living creatures. Oh, okay. So even if you're introverted like me, you're going to be noticed. Sounds like a curse for an introvert. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> and my looks attracted a lot of attention too. Oh, uh, yeah, it's like his aura on top of his looks. Damn. It's normal for it's normal for demigods. They tend to be considered very attractive amongst humans. Yeah, well, oh. <laughs> but on a large scale, like a university campus, that was a new experience. <laughs> I didn't probably always handle it well. And what about your love life? Do you really want to know about that? Yeah, sure. You might not like the answers. Um. No, I can handle it. Whatever. I'll still love you despite your exes that you may have. Yes. Yes, I want to know. Because I'm damn nosy. Alright, well you asked. It's not in my nature to hold anything back. Yes. It's been extremely varied. Back in the past, no. Back in the past, no, I never dated anyone. Yes. I got close to a few girls, but the only one I have ever been serious about was Lady Shizuka. Yeah, I figured. But here, I dated a lot, trying to fill the loneliness I had from throwing. I had from being thrown into a new age. Oh, okay. I wouldn't really say there was much love in it, though, not usually. Hookups, flings, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I don't mind. It's okay. I don't, I don't mind. It's whatever. Depending on my mood, that was something I did as a distraction. Sometimes I get disgusted with, all, with it all, though. Yeah, it gets pretty tiring. Disgusted by how easily girls would fall into my lap. I knew the only reason they wanted me was because of, the, of that divine attraction in my looks. Yeah, yeah. Precious few people ever want to take the time to get to know me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a lot of physical relationships that ended up being meaningless. That sounds like the Tinder life. <laughs> so yeah. And a few emotional ones that ended up good life. That ended up good life experience at least. Okay, well that's good. You got a little bit of both. My last ex was Luz Sapienti. Sapienti? Sounds very Italian. The healing teacher. Yes, we're just good friends now. I'm glad it wasn't awkward. Uh, she wanted to take things a lot faster than I did. She was ready to settle down and I wasn't. Oh, okay. Commitment has never been my strong point. Yeah, understandable. I think maybe that's just because I never found the right one. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I wanted to kind of apologize for all the crap you've been through for me. Nah, but I realize that's probably a massive task that will take a long time. So maybe I could start tonight? <gasps> Ooh, you're so smooth! Oh, damn! Dead tonight. <laughs> you know that I did save you. You know that I did save you because I wanted to. You don't need to feel a. You don't need to feel obligated. I just can't help but feel that way. This is who I am. Oh, do you want to go home instead? E I turn it over in my head. Being alone after all the scary stuff I've been through with gods that can pop up anywhere at any time and kill me. No, no, I'm good. Uh, I don't mind doing whatever you. I don't mind doing whatever with you. I mean, uh, going wherever. And I mean, if you're you, if you're DTF, then I guess so too. <laughs> I guess I am too. Uh, I'm sure you're still tired though. Yes, I am. So I was thinking just relaxing together. Yes, let's let's just Netflix, and chill, properly, no hookups. Yes. Relaxing together, uh, sure, sounds good. Yeah, relaxing together? I didn't think we'd so soon. Wait, no, no girl, not like that, God. Why am I assuming, what am I assuming? He could mean anything by that. There's not, there's not, no need to jump to conclusions, Hana, right? <laughs> this is probably a bad time to realize that I don't even know what Hagiwara's policies are on teacher, are on student teacher relationships, right? Looking at Hikaru, I can't bring myself to ask him either. We quickly finish up eating and leave the cafe together. Okay, well. Uh, so this is what you meant by relaxing. 
Yes, of course. <laughs> Hikaru and I have been taking ha. Ah, Hikaru and I have been talking, taking a stroll around the park. God, I thought we said talking and strolling, not talk. Yeah, whatever. Yes. He finishes buying two cans of green tea out of the vending machine and hands me one. Oh. Yeah, I like ta I like taking walks in the evening. Nothing can beat an evening stroll and tea. Yes. Did you have something else in mind? <laughs> no. What are you talking about? No, no, not really. <sighs> I just wasn't sure what you meant. Yeah. He kind of leans out over the railing, looking at the lake. He looks so picturesque against the setting sun that I have to fight with myself not to pull out my phone and take a picture. Okay, yeah, that was really choppy of me, sorry. But yeah, I would love to take a picture of you. You're, you look like a painting. <laughs> he kind of looks back at me and I look away. Oops. <laughs> a gentle breeze t tosses my hair and I move a strand out of my face, tucking it behind my ear. I thought you'd look nice like that. Aw, oh, I'm glad the feeling's mutual. Like, I think you look very beautiful against the setting sun. And I guess, coincidentally, you think that I look very beautiful against the setting sun as well. Aw. Huh? What? With the wind in your hair. <laughs> Did you just... <sighs> and the colors of the sky against your skin. You're really pretty. Thanks! I think you're pretty too. Hikaru quickly looks away and I'm not sure if I caught a hint of red on his cheeks or if it's just my imagination. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> he laughs. Normally I'm smoother than this, but I can't seem to get my words to come out right now. <laughs> uh, I, come to, I come to stand beside Hikaru at the railing looking over the looking out over the lake too. Uh, you don't need to be smooth with me, just be yourself. Yeah. Myself, isn't that cool? <laughs> no, it's okay. I still think you're cute. He kind of gives a self-depreciating laugh. <laughs> yeah. A self-deprecating. Self-deprecating laugh, yeah. I suddenly want to be cool, but it's not working. Doesn't that mean that you like me? I mean, I mean literally you're already cool because, you know, you control the wind and shit. <laughs> lol, lol. Okay, yeah. A silence passes between us. Maybe it does. A thousand hopeful feelings bubble up inside me, but I squash them down as they come. Is that even okay, if you mean it like I think you do? I mean, cause I'm a student and all, you know, sure. Hikaru shrugs. Don't know, I never asked before. It was my personal policy not to get involved with students. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't look good, but... <sighs> he kind of leans over towards me and puts an arm around me, drawing me close. Oh, Being against his muscular body and feeling his body heat through his thin shirt makes my cheeks heat up. Oof. If you're okay with it, I don't care. Oh. <laughs> if there's no if there's something I want, I'll find a way to get it. Oh my, or someone. Okay with it? Yeah? Assuming I'm that someone you want, then yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy and grateful. You are the you are that someone, and it's me who's eternally grateful to you. Oh. The two of us fall silent watching the shimmering water with Hikaru's arm around me. The birds chirp to herald the coming of night and my tensions melt away. For the first time in a long, long time, I feel safe and relaxed. Protected in Hikaru's embrace, I want this feeling to go on forever. I know that whatever troubles the future holds, it's worth it if I can have this feeling. Is that it? Is that the end? <gasps> oh, wow, it is! Oh my god! Okay, so I got two achievements. Of course he doesn't have an epilogue. Anyways, I'm gonna see. Hold on. Cause guys, if I if I go into here, hold on. Before that, we can finally see our his unseen. So yes. So, uh, the children born of relationships between gods and humans are known as demigods. Yes, figures. Well, they can be. Well, they can blend in with humans much more easily than gods. All of them retain their certain that certain something that attracts others to them. The exact powers these children inherit from their divine parents rise, but all are known to have an unusually long, if not in, if not near immortal lifespan and at and at minimum superhuman physical capabilities, though the extent of these varies. Unlike other beings, demigods also may enter the divine realm with their physical bodies for extended amount of time and can be elevated to full godhood if found worthy by the gods. Oh, okay. That's interesting. But anyways, um, aside from that. So book two, if we go over here, Dark End was the other ending that we could get. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna go ahead and possibly squish in the bad ends that we can get with book two, I believe. If it's anything like book one, how we had bad ends in 
book one, then yeah, I'm pretty sure this book two at bad ends as well. So I'm just gonna double check for time, but I'm pretty sure I'm still good on it. Okay, yeah, no, we're, we're still good on time. I just need to pull up the guide and I just need to see where exactly I need to change my choices in order to get his dark end. Which I'm pretty sure would probably involve more on his demigod side, I believe. So let's see. Okay, here we go. I pulled up the guide to see if we can get the dark end. And so basically we start off here. Again, I'm going to do it over like in the way where, uh, what's it called? Where we, um, we, 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 we do, where, where any of the choices that overlap, I'm going to skip out on. And then, uh, the other choices that are different, I will, you know, get get you in on get you guys in on it so yeah this is the first choice that we have where it's like you know when shizuka asked us about why we're here and our purpose here and i said before it was to explain the mission to save hikaru but this time the guide is saying to tell shizuka you're her daughter so we're giving it to her right from the very start so yes so i'm i start to explain who i am but i suddenly get the feeling that might cause a lot of problems and drama i don't need right now oh okay well she's hesitating since I can't tell how since I can't tell how she reacts, I changed what I was going to say. I'm from the future. Oh, so she like diverts it. Cause I feel like, yeah, that would totally mess up that one point where we had that heart to heart with Shizuka, where we spilled our side of the story about the truth about us being her daughter, as well as her side of the story about how she ran away and all the other shit and that. Okay, so yeah, okay. So I think that's the future. So a time traveler. You expect us to believe that? Time travel is not possible outside of those in the divine realms. Unless you are claiming to be a goddess. No, of course not. Wow, he's annoying even here. <laughs> I am not, but I had to help the but I had the help of some. I even know your mother. Yes. So please tell us your story then. I can tell you are no ordinary traveler. I search my thoughts for the best way to convince them without simply freaking them out. I would rather avoid getting attacked by these two if possible, yes. Oh, of course, so I hold out my hand and summon Haruka's earring in my palm, holding it out for Hikaru to see. Okay, there we go, we can skip on ahead, and we can go to the next choice that we can make, whether it is, like, the same or not. Yeah, okay, yeah, anyways. Okay, so this is after our little scuffle. I think we were kind of we were kind of hinting that we were we didn't know how to feel when Hikaru just didn't hesitate to jump in front of Shizuka to protect her. So I, I think before I said be envious but understanding, but this time the guide is saying jealous and annoyed. I feel a pang of jealousy and not just because of this. Hikaru doesn't seem to even remotely like or trust me in any timeline and I'm doing all this for him. I've risked so much and destroyed even more just to save his ass. You ungrateful bitch. <laughs> No, he'll come to understand sooner sooner or later, but like yeah, as of right now, we're like annoyed. I shudder. What am I even what am I doing trying to save such an ungrateful son of a bitch? <laughs> sorry, sorry Haruka. Oh my god, same though. At this moment, yeah, same. I honestly don't even know why I care. Yeah, there we go. So okay, there's that. Okay, so let's see, let's move on ahead. And uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I think this is like the other choice. I don't think it's gonna be that much of a significance. But anyways, Shizuka offered a rice ball to us and we were just kind of iffy on this whole kindness thing that she's showing to us and we we're like, what the hell? So I said last time is thank you, it's just to accept the rice ball. But this time the guy's just gonna say dot dot dot. We're not gonna we're not gonna comment. I quietly stay out the rice ball in her hand. I realize that I'm sh that I'm not sure of what to say to her at all. How am I supposed to react to her? I noticed that Hikaru is watching the interaction carefully, so I reach out and take the rice ball from Shizuka without further comment. Yes, and I quickly realized how hungry I was. Okay, there we go. We're gonna skip on ahead now. Okay, here we are. We're, we're just answering questions that Hikaru was asking us about the future. The last time I said we, 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 we should go simply, and we say we dress completely differently. Completely differently, but this time the guide is like, uh, what's it called? We have uh, cars, I think it was? Yeah, cars for one. Yeah, there are proper roads and cars. There are many roads poured and paved with asphalt. Asphalt, yes. Is that some kind of liquid material? Some kind of liquid material? Well, yes. Instead of stones or anything like that, it's a black substance that makes flat roads. There's also cement sidewalks. Oh, cement is like asphalt but white. I see. That sounds useful. I imagine traveling is much easier in the future. Yes, it is. It is. There are and there are things we ride in. Yes, like horses. Kind of. I mean, they have horse power, but, you know, not in that kind of way. Sort of. They aren't animals. They're mechanical things. They're powered by engines. 
Ah, it all gets a bit complicated, a bit, but basically they're non-living things that we can transport cargo and people in. I see. It all sounds amazing to think that one day I'll see it for myself. Oh, there we go, yes. Shizuka chuckles. I think he should be a scholar instead of a warrior. Okay, there we go. We're gonna skip on ahead. Okay, so this is the point where we have a little heart-to-heart -heart with Hikaru the first time around where we spilled everything everything to him, like the whole truth about Shizuka and what she did in the future. Uh, the last time I said, but I don't know if the sacrifice was the right path because of all the shitty things that we had to do to get to this point. But this time the guide is saying, but ruining everyone's lives for one person. I ruined everyone's lives, everyone's lives just to save you. Tell me that doesn't make me a bad person, an evil person. It does not, at least in my eyes. How could you say that? People died because of me. What is more evil? To deny the person who saved you a chance to return to life? To let their soul fade into the abyss? Uh, or, is it, or is it more evil to risk entire worlds to try and save that one person? I don't know! It's- oh, okay, oh wait, no, it gives you the choice. It says it's more evil to deny the person a chance, right? Okay, there we go. How could I possibly deny you even the smallest chance to be saved, not when you saved me first, right? You were gonna- you were gonna lose everything. If you came back, you might not be yourself. You wouldn't even have a soul anymore. I couldn't live with myself, knowing I didn't- uh, knowing that I didn't at least try. Didn't try at least, right? How could I live not having tried to save a life to save someone who gave everything to save me? Hikaru nods. I am sure that it was the same for me, the me in the future. I would never back down from trying to save a life if I could, especially when the reason it, it is at even especially when the reason it is at risk is because of me. Okay, so that is why I cannot blame or shame you for your dis for your actions. Aw, thanks. Everyone has their own burdens to bear, our own challenges to overcome. The regrets we carry from our actions can feel as if they will suffocate you. But you can but if you can remember how far you have come all while looking ahead of the to the future. Okay, oh yeah, he's gonna give us the same pep talk. Okay, let's go. Okay, we made it to ha my Mia Miyazawa Village. Yes, and this is Sienna, and we saw the Kitsune statues before. We said to ta to ask Sienna to tell us more about them, but this time we're going. The guy said, I don't even know why this choice even matters. But anyways, whatever. I'm gonna do this to the T. So this time we're gonna say, I love Kitsune. Ah, they're one of my favorite parts of folklore. I mean, I love Kitsune! <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. They deserve all the love. I nod vigorously. They do. Yeah, they really do. Shizuka quietly watches our interaction with a smile. Um, uh, Sienna, I was wondering how it is that you knew- that you know Hikaru. Oh, is that it? That's it all? Okay, well yeah, okay, well, alright. Let's skip on ahead then. Okay, here we are. We are up to this decision point where Sienna's doing her thing and then uh, Shizuka discloses the information about how Suneka's going on a rampage. And then this is the point where, uh, again, we were kind of confused as to what to do. Uh, we either say, he kind of don't fight her, what about me? But this time the guide is saying, what about Sienna? But what about Sienna? We can't just leave her here. Yeah, of course not. No, we would never do that, of course. But we have no choice but to cut our visit to Miyazawa short. Uh, we will get her back safely and then head off to find this goddess. I do not like the idea of risking either of you. My heart skips a beat. Okay, there we go. Of course he would do that. He wouldn't just leave her like that. He's just gonna be like, yeah, we can't stay too long. Okay, I think this is probably the last of the choices that we, we will make before we get our dark end because everything from then on is the same. So let's go. Okay, there we go. Final chapter. This is our dark end. Let's see what's happening because we are. Oh, oh, we get our, we get our other half of what's happening with Galen's end and Suneka's end, right? We're bringing back Tokyo shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? What? What do you mean, what? Uh, where am I? Why am I here? Yeah, my body feels so light, so very light. What the fuck? So I look around and feel my stomach turn. Oh no, what? No, 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 no. Maybe I'm just having a nightmare because before it left off on e branching either towards the passionate end or like the dark end is when we fell asleep in Hikaru's apartment. So yeah, not this again, not here. Why am I here? Yeah, why am I here? Is this just a bad dream maybe? I try to turn around but I find that I can't tell if I'm moving anywhere or, anywhere or not. Everything looks the same, I can't tell left from right or up from down. I can feel my whole body start to shake. But when I try to wrap my arms around myself with some sort of comfort, I find that my hands slip right through. What? No. I look down at my hands or what should be my hands. They're fading away. I'm fading away. No, 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 this isn't real. No, this can't be happening. What the? Was everything just a dream? Did I never really ever escape this void between worlds in the first place? Help. What the hell? That'd be really bullshit. It's pointless. 
There's no hope for me. I'm going to disappear and... Hot tears stream down my face, I can barely breathe. I'm all alone out here in the nothing. The emptiness is filled with only the sound of my desperate sobs. Hikaru... Hana! What? I look around. What? That voice? Uh, maybe I'm just having a really bad nightmare. Hikaru? Uh, Hana, wake up! Yes, it's me. It's just me having a bad nightmare. Hikaru's face. Why does it look so sad? Why does it look sad? I blink a few times, heavily disoriented. I realize that Hikaru is holding me by the arms as if he had been shaking me awake. I look down at them and he lets go. Are you okay, Hana? Bad dream. Yeah, I think so. I put a hand up to my face trying to clear sleep away. My sleep catches my eye and my sleeve catches my eye and I realize I'm still sleeping in this damn kimono. I inhale deeply trying to wake up and sleepily glance at Hikaru. Why are you here? Well, this is my room. Yeah, <laughs> because this is my apartment. Yeah. And more importantly, you were having a nightmare. I was? Oh, yeah. I think back to what I just saw. I was back there. I was going to disappear again. Oh, yeah. I guess I was. You were screaming. Yeah, well, can you blame me? <laughs> he kind of reaches over without looking at me and grazes my cheek with his, with his thumb. Yeah. That's when I realized I've been crying. Shit, how embarrassing. Sorry. There's no need to apologize. We can't help what we dream about. Aw, oh, yeah, okay, thanks then. It was about everything that happened lately, wasn't it? Yeah. I nod numbly. Yeah, but I'm an awful person. I've done terrible things. Maybe it would have been better if, if for everyone if I had just faded out of- If I had just faded out of time back then. That's not true. I mean, it wouldn't have been better for me at least. Oh, right. That was your only, like, saving chance of coming- of you coming back to life. Uh, we sit in silence like that for a few moments until I can't stand it anymore and hop up. Ah, uh, it's too weird being here so close with him. So close like this with him. I walk around the room to stretch and stretch while Hikaru follows me with his eyes, but I still feel impossibly tired. What time is it? Uh, just after 9pm. You haven't been asleep that long. Really? Yeah, I feel like it. But I feel too anxious to go back to sleep right away. Hmm, <sighs> what do you want to do then? I don't know. <laughs> I stop pacing and pause, thinking. I, well, could you talk to me? Yeah, about what? Anything? I get nervous, suddenly feeling as if I'm prying. He hates when I pry, but maybe things are different from now. Maybe things are different now that I know the truth about him. I sit down on the edge of the bed and look at and look back at him. Well, like, what happened after you were sealed? Oh, that's an, that's an interesting thing to know, yeah. After I was sealed. I want to know about what you did after. What it was like for you when you awoke. Well, when I awoke, I was completely alone. Oh. My wounds from the light, my wounds from the fight had completely healed while I was between dimensions. Suneka was nowhere in sight. I guess she had escaped earlier, but I was hoping that she had been left in the other dimension while I had been allowed to escape. Oh, so he got out? Really? Hey, why didn't you tell me? Even though I doubted it, I had no other choice but to just leave the cave. But just to leave the cave, yeah. I traveled out of the cave. Into the field where my last farewells were had. Yeah. Passed that, passed that into forest, looking for a nearby town. But when I got there, it's all gone, right? Yes! Wow! What a trip! What a mind trip! That must have been... That must have been really disorienting. There was a strange path with huge moving chunks of metal. What I, what I now know as automobiles, of course. But I was so surprised that I almost got hit by one. Yeah, oops. I had no idea what was going on. I was so lost, and I had no one with me. Finally, I decided to call the only person that, who I knew could hear me, no matter the time or place. Galen! Galen, I know that you can hear me. I need your help, please. Hello! <laughs> as soon as I called him, he appeared, almost as if, I, as if he had been waiting for me. I had met the god in the past several times, as he was Lady Shizuka's friend. It's shameful to say, but I was jealous of him, of their relationship. And his careless attitude irritated me. But now, as life seems to have a way of doing, I needed to count on him. You rang! <laughs> I explained my situation to Galen, and he in return explained to me that 500 years had passed since I'd been sealed. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so I was right. This is like how he managed to live for so long. It all began to sink in quickly. My friends, dead. 
the parents that raised me long dead, the woman I loved gone forever. Though I now know differently, I had no idea of her immortality, of her immortality back then. Although I felt lonely plenty of times before, it was nothing compared to this. Suffocating void, suff compared to that this uh, what this suffocating void that was growing within myself. Yes, I guess that Gallant took pity upon me, because he quietly offered to set me up with a new life here in this time period. There is nothing more I can do for you. It's all right. This is enough. I'll repay you someday. I will look forward to it. <laughs> and here I am. That's I can't even imagine how that must have felt, right? Damn, can't you? Well, yeah, I guess I can a, a bit. Learning that I'm not hu learning that I'm not human and that Shizuka used me. And then when I was thrown us and then when I was thrown outside of time, I felt that kind of loneliness back loneliness back then. Hikaru nods. But because of you, and Galen, I guess. We're here, and not alone anymore. Yeah, we're safe, and... I'd like to protect you from now on. Aw, you what? Are you really going to make me say it again? Yes. Sorry, I just... <laughs> this is really hard to get used to. I never expected you to remember anything, much less, um... Like me when you woke up. Hikaru sighs. And yet you fought to save me anyway. Why wouldn't I like a girl? No, a woman like that. Oh, <laughs> because you love my mother, don't you? Well, maybe, yeah, I did, I do. But that was over 500 years ago. I was gonna say, yeah. And it's been a few years since I awoke in this world. I learned to move on. Well, I tried to. She turned me down anyway. <laughs> she did? Yeah, oh, you found her, yeah, eventually. Yes, the night before we sealed Seneca away, we had an argument. Oh, ah, I thought I heard you two arguing. Huh. In case we died, I thought I should confess to her the feelings I had carried since I had seen since I had seen her when I was sixteen. But she told me I reminded her of the brothers she had long she had lost long ago. She told me that she loved me like a brother. Yes, bro zoned. Thinking back, I should have been honored to hear that. But instead, I got angry. I was foolish. I was frustrated and scared of the upcoming fight, and I had held these feelings in for so long. I guess with the fear of confessing, the fear of losing her in the fight. And having my hopes crushed like that, I reacted badly. I got upset. Oh yeah. It's not an excuse for my actions, but that's what happened. Oh. And so we didn't speak properly again, except to say farewell before the before the fight. Oh. That's the last memory I have of her. I see. It must have been haunting you all this time. It has been, but when I awoke, I tried to move on. Not only had she rejected me, but I thought she was dead. There was no reason to continue to have these feelings. So I dated, messed around, but I never forgot her. I couldn't forget her. I couldn't forget her. Seeing you suddenly appear with her face, especially as a student of mine, it was difficult. Yeah, yeah. You tripped balls every single time you saw me. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I just thought you hated me. Hikaru shakes his head with a smile. It's me who should be sorry. You didn't deserve that. No, I understand. It's not like you could have just told me all that stuff. And it's not possible to control how we feel. You're kind, you're kind and forgiving as always. Ah, now. Hikaru rises up, walks over to me, and scoops me up in his arms. Oh, whoa. Hikaru, what the hell? And dumps me on the bed. Putting an arm on either side, he leans over without touching me. It's time to sleep, okay? I can tell you're still tired. Yeah. It's my turn to watch over you for tonight. Then he stands up, but not before touching my nose affectionately. Oh. I'll be right out here if you need me. Ah, good night, Hannah. Okay. Ah, with that, I'm left alone with my only. Th I'm left alone with my thoughts. Only with my thoughts. Yes. Uh, when the shock wears off, I realize how fast my heart was beating. There are many things that aren't clear to me yet, and many things that I don't understand. But even if our paths are filled with pain and darkness, I can hope that our path is always li lit by light. And I think that if Hikaru is there. Even if he, even if it isn't, I'm willing to face that unknown future together with him. Ah, oh, really? That's it? No god form or some shit like that? Or we don't even get to know the other half of like, what's it called? Of what happened with if Galen was even successful of bringing back Tokyo? Anyways, there's that. There's our dark end. Jesus. Okay. Does that unlock? Does that unlock like a, a mystic end for us? Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Ah, no, it didn't. 
It didn't. Okay, so anyways guys, I know this is probably going to turn out to be a really uh, slightly long episode, but I um, just want to fit everything in just because we only have two bad endings left to do. So I want to I just want to fit it in just because, you know, I'm here anyway. So let's do that. Let's go back into some of the choices that we can make and get our bad endings. And uh, yeah, again, I will do it the same way I've been doing it. I'll catch you guys up on some of the stuff that are different, but for now, um, yeah. I will skip on ahead of anything that's overlapping, but oh, whoops. Okay, anyways, so the first choice or the first bad end that we can get with Hikaru is called the sobs of a broken man. Damn, that sounds really depressing. But anyways, here we are back in the first choice, and since we are already we've done two of the choices already, we're going to do the very obvious one. It's called, which is this one, which is she deserves to know nothing, because she's a bitch. This is the woman that will throw her curse of eternity on me. One day, I will never, I never wanted to see her face again. I'm only here for Hikaru anyway. I don't need to talk to her. Wow, damn, salty. But anyways, I, I get I get where her feelings of that come are coming from. So why are you staring at Lady Shizuka so? Hikaru's face seems tense, and his hand drops to hover by his waistline where, uh, wakiz where a waki waki zashi hangs. Oh, with a pang of hurt, I immediately understand that Hikaru feels strongly protective of Shizuka. Could she be? Are they? Ugh. Well, no, he, no, it's one-sided. Will, will, will you explain yourself or not? I was just tossed here, so I'm not sure what I should be doing, but I know I need Hikaru to trust me. I work to smooth my face over and give a slight nod. I will. I search my thoughts for the best way to convince them without simply freaking them out. Okay, we're going to skip on ahead. We are going to go towards the, after the fight, and uh, make, the, make the last choice that we can make for that, for that instance, so... Yes, yeah, so here we are. So yes, as I said before, we've done the other two choices, so it's only natural for us to do the last one, which is angry and resentful towards Shizuka. Because we're just going to be petty. I don't get it. Why does he kind of like such a horrible woman? Why does she even... What does she even... What does he even see in her? Yes. I wonder if he still uh, would if I told him the horrible things she's done. I don't believe that Shizuka deserves someone like Hikaru, Hikaru protecting her. A thought briefly flashes through my mind and I almost want to entertain it. For a moment, I consider telling him about the ritual. I sigh. Damn, Hannah, Jesus. I know, he would hardly believe me. And even if he did, I'm nothing to him in this time, somehow, somehow even more so than in the future. Right. As tempting as it may be to simply tell him, I decide against it. If only for the fact that it might just make him pissed off and distress, and distress me more. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna skip on ahead to the next choice that we can make that is different. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, here's the last, here's, wait, is it the last of the choices? No, okay, not necessarily, but anyway, so this is, again, we did the other two choices, so this time we're going to do the ones that we didn't do, which is this actual technology, like smartphones, which I don't understand how this can lead towards a bad end, but okay. Well, there's this super cool thing called a smartphone. Well, I guess we can tell them about the cars, but we can't tell them about the smartphones, I guess. <laughs> Hi, I wish I had mine, I'd show you. What does it do? Tons of stuff. It's a relatively new invention, actually, but it's completely changed lives. Oh gosh, you guys don't even have phones, do you? No. <laughs> well, a phone is a way you can connect, you can contact someone across long distance. You can hear their voice even if they're on the other side of the world. So just like magic. Well, no, not really. But yeah, I guess it is. But it's for everyone, everywhere. It's human-made. Yeah. No more humans made such a thing. Yes. Yeah. Humanity can be pretty cool from time to time. Yeah. When they're not fucking shit up and being horrible, shitty people. I see. It all sounds amazing to think that one day I'll see it for myself. There we go. Okay. So we're going to skip on ahead to the last choice that we are going to make before everything goes downhill. So let's go. Okay, this is the last of the choices and we basically said before that it was like, you know, ruining everyone's lives for one person. He gave us a little bit of a talk and then, of course, our answer this time around is going to be it's more evil to risk entire worlds instead of giving that one person a chance. So yeah. So it's infinitely more evil to risk an entire world just to save one person. It's the epitome of selfishness. Yes. In the future, I will give my life because I would never turn down the chance to save one. If the question is saving a life versus only risking other ones, I would probably save the one every time. Yes. However, I can't say there's a right or wrong answer to that question, but why did you continue if you felt that way? Oh, maybe obligations? Mm -hmm. If you knew what was going to happen and did it anyway, whatever your reason for continuing on that path, was it not out of your own desires or your own selfishness in the end? Right? I'm, a, I'm being a hypocrite. 
In the end, it was your decision. In the end, it was always our decision. It, it is always our decisions. And no matter how bad it, it makes us feel, we have to live with and accept the consequences of our actions. Everyone has their own burdens to bear. Yes. Okay, we're gonna skip on ahead, and apparently it stops right from the point where like we, we get to the village and we say, Can you tell me more about Kitsune's? And that's where uh, eventually the bad end is supposed to occur. So let's go! I wonder. <laughs> Okay, so I, I I sort of I had a feeling when I was like skipping through everything that you know the the title makes sense if it's like the sobs of a man or whatever the fuck I already forgot I already forgot the title of it the sobs of a broken man so we didn't go after uh, Hikaru when everyone was you know yelling that he was a murderer so like I guess we'll just we'll just never know his side of the story so this is where we're staying with Shizuka in the the village so my name is Shizuka Hagiwara I am sure some of you remember me. Gas spread out across the crowd and they quiet down immediately even as they back up from her. Despite the horrible tragedy that took place, Hikaru chose to come back here, each step weighing more heavily than the last. We have come to help your village with your problem. After all, after that we will leave. Do you take any issue with that? What will you do if he gets out of hand again? Yeah, will you protect us again, Lady Shizuka? If the need arises, I will. We are, we are here to help you, not to harm. Now, who is in charge here so that we may discuss the situation? Shizuka ends up speaking with the village elders, but Hikaru does not come back. Eventually, Shizuka and I go to find Hikaru as night sets on the town, but we can't find him. Where did you go? <laughs> with nowhere else to look, we finally decide to check outside of town and find a nearby lake. What we find there... I see some kind of black shape, but it's too dark to tell what it is. All I know is that it smells terrible, like some kind of rotten flesh. There is some kind of liquid puddling around it as the substance leaks out from it. Don't tell me you got yourself killed by the kappa, Jesus Christ! I hear a gentle sobbing with tears my, with that. Ah, I hear a gentle sobbing that tears my attention away. That tears my attention away from the disgusting thing. Oh, did you or did you like totally completely overkill the kappa and you feel completely terrible about it? <laughs> Maybe. Hikaru's dark shape is huddled on the ground on his knees. On his lap rests a sleeping Sienna. <gasps> oh, Sienna, I guess. Oh, shit. Did Sienna go after Hikaru instead of us? And then he just ends up snapping at her and just killing her? Really? Damn, why is she sleeping? Sleeping? Is she sleeping? Is she, she is sleeping, right? Why is he crying? No, is she dead, girl? I dully try to put together what must have happened here while Shizuka goes to Hikaru. Uh, what happened? Sienna, she came after me. The monster attacked us. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, he's not that horrible of a person. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Oops. It was the monster that killed Sienna. I couldn't save her. Again, I couldn't save. Hikaru's voice trails off. Neither I nor Shizuka say anything. What is there to say? The only sound that follows are the sobs of a broken man. There we go. Hikaru did not speak again. He would not move from that spot. Shizuka and I brought Sienna's body back to her parents that night. We told them that she had died because of the monster. Yeah. I will never forget the heartbroken wails of Sienna's family. We came back to the t we came back to the lake to retrieve Hikaru afterward, but he was no longer there. I was immediately transported back to the Chaos Realm, where a tearful Haruka informed me that Hikaru's soul fragments had disappeared from that time. There was nothing else left. I was sent home to my time, with only jumbled memories of a time gone past to haunt me. Okay, there we go. Temporarily in- Temporal insanity. Damn. Shit, that sucks. But okay, wow, there's that. Shit. Okay, time for bad end number two. Bad end number two is called For Whom the Flowers Grow. Okay, again. Uh, this time around, I'm pretty sure we're gonna go through a lot of the other choices that we already made since we basically almost made every choice that we can we can make. So yeah, I'm just gonna go to the one that really matters and that changes, and then yeah, again. So yeah, BRB for the very last time, we're gonna do this. Okay, here's one of the two choices I believe are the different ones. So again, we already made the two choices before below here. So the last one we can make right now to get this bad ending is to why is to say why do you care? Why do you care about my well-being, Shizuka? Why do you care? Uh, you are our traveling companion. It is only natural. I noticed that Hikaru is watching the interaction carefully, so I reach out and take the rice ball from Shizuka without further comment. Okay, that's it. She just she just kind of like snaps at her, and then that's it. Okay, let's go. Okay, I, I lied. It's not one of the two choices that are different. There's like, I think, okay, there's a couple more. But anyways, here's one of them, which is basically, we're either going to leave to get help while Hikaru deals with the kappa, or we stay and we fight. Of course, last time I said we stay and we fight because we got this, but this time we're going to say, are you sure you'll be okay alone? 
Are you sure you'll be okay alone? Yes, just go, now. Okay. I try to flee, but the kappa is faster than I could have guessed. It darts after me, moving to block my way out. Okay, not like we could leave anyways. It lets out a gargle sort of shriek as if to say, you're not going anywhere. Well, I clearly I'm not. Fine, you weird thing. If it's the fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. The kappa runs at us with incredible speed. Okay, it's so fast that I can barely- Okay, we're gonna skip on ahead to the point where Hikaru asks us if we're afraid or not. Okay, here we go. We Last time we said no because that's the right thing to say, and this time we're gonna say yes. You look terrifying, inhuman. Damn, I know what you can do now too, on all the gods I've come in contact with. I shudder. Yeah, isn't it natural to fear a god? A demigod, but yes. I believe that- I believe that is the normal correct response. Gods cannot be trusted, no one with this much power can be trusted. Oh damn, that disgust- that disgust and the monster we came here to fight already dealt with, we decide to head back to the village. Okay, but I can see the hesitation in Hikaru's eyes as I hold his hand- as I hold his hand the rest of the way back. That's awkward, you just told him that you were totally afraid of him, and now you're like, you're holding hands with him, regardless. <laughs> when we get back to town, people still look at Hikaru with suspicious eyes. But it's obvious that she's the kind- okay, there we go, okay, so let's skip on ahead to the next- to the next choice. And uh, yeah, okay. Go. Okay, here's the final choice before our bad ending with where the flowers bloom and basically it's again like this I guess this is like the inevitable like bad decision bad ending choice where it's like we don't accept this decision to stay and fight because we are really super worried that you know we are like no you should go you should leave and run away and not have to deal with it. So before of course he accepted his decision, we're gonna press the issue this time. Hikaru, I can't accept that. This is different. It's unnecessary for you to risk your life. Shizuka and I are are I am in me. An intense, an intense, oppressive feeling suddenly vibrates through my bo entire body. My skin prickles and my hair stands on end. A grim expression spreads across Hikaru's face. Is it Tsuneka? Hikaru nods. Okay, she's here. Okay, so... Okay, let's just skip on ahead and see where the hell that leads. Okay, yeah, I'm assuming that the, the sealing ritual doesn't, doesn't work. Okay, so let's try. So Hikaru throws his sword at Tsuneka and in a moment of clarity, I suddenly understand. I understand that he intends to sacrifice himself to be sealed with her. Before I can think clearly, my body reacts. Oh no! It's not like the, the, the sealing didn't work. We decide to go along with it. Oh damn. I tackle Suneka and we roll away from Hikaru. Oh no! Oh, so we're replacing him! Oh damn! The goddess feels tiny and frail under my hands, but her grip on me feels as if it's breaking my bones. Pain. Pain and more pain. Pain from her grip on me melts into the pain of her scream, which melts into the pain of the crushing pressure of her aura. But still I don't let go. If chaos brought me here, then it must still be in this timeline. I'm sure I can change the future. I catch a glimpse of Hikaru standing there helplessly. Yeah, Hana, yes. It's not like I can talk right now, not with the pain blending with into pure heat. My teeth are clenched as my skin starts to burn away in my eyes, I let out a blood curling scream. No, we have no, what have we what have you done? Uh now Shizuka. I managed to force out my last words as I hang on to the pissed off goddess for dear life. And we off we go. I can't see Shizuka, I can't see anything. I wonder what that I wonder that I have I wonder that I have eyes anymore. Yeah. I pray I don't black out, but I honestly can't tell if I'm conscious anymore. Maybe I'm not. I can't really tell what's going on, but before my thoughts vanish, I pray that I met that I've managed it. That I finally managed to save Hikaru. Maybe. I don't know. So, um... Yeah? At first there is only darkness, but eventually I have many dreams. Dreams of other times, other lives, maybe. I don't remember them well when I finally wake up. Oh yeah! One day I open my eyes again. There is no one with me. I feel so, so, so very stiff. I mean, 500 years of sleeping on this cave ground. It takes me a while to figure out how to move my body again. Maybe hours. I don't really remember time anymore. I wound, My wounds are completely healed, and there is no evidence they ever existed. But finally, I pick myself off the ground before I, I was so ungracefully sprawled. And I see flowers. Flowers everywhere. I sit up amongst them in the dark cave, utterly stunned and confused. Damn. But then it hits me what must have happened. My eyes begin to prickle with tears. Hikaru. Aw, oh, you made a makeshift memorial for me? I wonder how long it has it been. Has it been 500 years? And does this mean Hikaru is still alive? And this, at this thought, I struggle to stand. What is he like now? After this many years, is he okay? 
Is he happy? Did he find love? Whatever the answers are, I know I won't find them in this cave. I stumble out of the cave into the future that I hope is my own, grasping my dream of seeing Hikaru again in my heart. But do I? I don't? Ah, I don't. Oh well, alternative resolution, calamity of aeons. Really? 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 Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, is that it? Did I, did I obviously g <gasps> No, I'm missing a C What the fuck? <gasps> I'm missing many CGs. What is this? It, or does Hikaru actually have an epilogue? Hold on. Let me just... I, I feel like... Okay. Anyways, regardless, you guys, I'm gonna end this episode here because I already did... We finished off his book too. His, all his endings that are possible for book 2. I'm still missing multiple CGs. I'm not too sure how I'm gonna go about doing this or if it's pertaining to his epilogue or something. I don't even know. But anyways, regardless, that is the end of Hikaru's route and Hikaru's story in general. So, wow, damn shit. It was, it was wild. It was, oh, uh, damn. <laughs> anyways, um, I feel like... Hikaru as a character, as a person, I feel like he he sort of ranks maybe surprisingly third, perhaps? Third? Maybe even a tie for Takumi, but I still feel Shinji is still my bae. <laughs> like, like, he's still gonna be my favorite guy that I've romanced uh, character-wise, but story-wise, I feel like... Yeah, I feel like definitely Hikaru's story and Takumi's story is definitely on, on top of being the top... Uh, uh, compared to the other guys, Shinji including. Um, hmm. I think, I think in terms of either it's better than Takumi's or if I liked it better than Takumi's, I feel like, I feel like Hikaru's story has aspects and elements of it that make it just as good as Takumi's story. So they're like tied again, but like regardless, I feel like their story is the most that I've enjoyed out of all the guys that, I've, that, for this game. Uh, just because of like, I guess like the intricacy of the realms and the universe of like the god side of this game like this yeah this this story here so we learn more about demigods we learn more about the twist and stuff and how like originally you know that the thing where it's like we thought we got a bad ending because Suneka showed up and like sent us to the nothingness but then it really only starts when Galen pulls us back and was like you can save Hikaru and this is how you do it and yeah and that plot twist where we visit each of like the um the the timelines and the the routes that we did I didn't know we would revisit like the show Takumi's and like Tatsuya's and Shinji's like I didn't know that they would be involved again after we completed it so that was a nice touch um what else was that that I like oh I liked how um I guess mostly character development that happened of course with Hana as well I think it happened as well with Suneka where she eventually comes around and was like yeah, you know, she got over her her anger towards killing human and going on this rampage and just kind of, you know, come to the root of the problem which is like, who killed Tokyo originally? And like, let's help her out on that just to, you know, have her get closure kind of thing. So yeah, there's that, which I feel like, you know, she has a, a just cause in a, to a certain degree of why she was doing the things that she did. Um, what else? What else? Um... I still feel pretty shitty that we kind of fucked up a lot of the timelines. Like, we got Takumi killed, and we possibly got Tatsuya's mom, Chisaki, killed too. And we didn't exactly have any resolution on that. Like, we just gonna leave it. <laughs> like, damn, okay. So, there's that. I thought that we could work something out, but I guess in a perfect world only, that, you know, there's, there's gotta be some sort of consequence to all this, like, madness. So, yeah, there's that. And then the whole time like you know getting to know Hikaru by going through his past and like eventually leading up to how it is that he he was able to live this pa past 500 years is because he was sealed away with Suneka but I guess I guess the the, the sealing spell only really did last for 500 years because again he woke up and Suneka was already gone it wasn't by his doing I guess but anyways regardless yeah a lot of a lot of intricacy a lot of detail a lot of like you know, uh, world building going on in terms of Hikaru's story. Uh, but uh, still, there's still the thrill of it. There's still definitely like the the thrill of discovering the origins of, you know, well, how it is that, you know, Sunek, how it is that 
this entire mess came about to be kind of thing and then traveling back to time kind of and fixing it and going back into the future and shit like that like I really like that I liked it I liked the story so yeah again as I said before I don't I don't necessarily like it better than Takumi's story but I definitely see it as like on equal uh, on an equal kind of like level with Takumi's story so yeah as a whole, Mystic Destiny has been a really great game, really amazing visual novel. Like again, I'm really fascinated and really impressed with the world building that this, that the, uh, the designer and the the game company has done, Aeon Dream Studio, and as well, and you know, character wise as well. Like even though some, I, like having gone through all the guys' route and stories as like now, I feel like Sho and Tatsuya, like story is like. They, you know, they're they they're like uh, they're like on the kind of like the bottom kind of level, like as bad as it sounds, but like definitely as you, I made it pretty obvious already. Like I already I I enjoy Takumi's and uh, Hikaru's story more, just because there's something more to work with other than you know just simple kind of like the I don't know like you know what the family issues that Tetsuya has has been going through as well as in some parts show like you know it it was super short I felt like their stories were super short and like not much has went down kind of thing uh, so I don't know that's just my opinion I still like them as characters but not necessarily my favorites but yeah um art wise I really loved it I am super impressed with what Aeon Dream Studios and their artists uh, have um, have done, have created in terms of character design, uh, CGs, and such and so on. Um, the only problem that I might nitpick on is that some of the CGs from like sprites versus CG characters, there sometimes there's some inconsistencies with it. Like I'm pretty sure it's because you know it's just this is probably their first like ultimate game visual novel game so obviously improvements have been made i think it was pretty obvious when um when it got around to hikaru's book 2 that i thought i found the art of, to be much better compared to some of the past uh cgs that i've seen in the other guys routes because there are some certain certain yeah, I can't talk. I've been talking for too long, so I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over my words. So there are cer uh, certain instances where, like, I thought some of the CGs in comparison to the sprites, like, they look really flat, and like some of the colors, sh like, or shading, or some of the, like, the um, the art style kind of like really like flattened out the characters' faces and stuff. So I I just thought something that I kind of noticed on, not necessarily that it's like it's really hurt, like it's it's terrible, but like no, it's just something that I, I picked up on because um, in comparison to some of the CGs, uh, a good example I would like to use is like Hikaru versus that Hikaru versus uh, uh, Suneka cutscene where like it's just that split screen where it's just Hikaru demigod version versus uh, versus Suneka when she's like you know hurling light shit at him like that I find like damn like you, Suneka in that CG definitely like looked like her sprite for her sprite version as well like it was a very dead on accurate kind of like um transition like um yeah like I feel I feel like that in that instance as well as Hikaru like his god his demigod sprite in the game and his CG at that moment were like alike like they definitely looked almost like like mirror mirror same whereas in some instances there there are times where Hana looked completely different from how she looked in her from her CG in her sprite that's just something I noticed on but again as I said it's probably it's just like art styles have improved or art skills have improved for their artists in terms of like you know down the road kind of thing so yeah I totally get it but again I'm not shitting on their art I think the art and the character design is amazing and so yeah, I'm just that's just something that I have to point out. But anyways, yeah, I am looking forward to more games from this um this studio or this company. And um yeah, like uh, definitely if you guys have heard, they are they are definitely working on that BTS visual novels and like as of the recent update or like 2.5 before no no not even two for phase two. Phase two I did it, and that's their next upcoming big project that is oh, like you know close to being released. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I can tell that there's, you know, art style improvement, and like you know, I'm 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 like excited for their final phase, which is de essentially the co the full prologue of the game. So tune into that. Be sure to check 
it out, subscribe, and yeah, you will definitely see me play the prologue of To the Edge of the Sky, that BTS visual novel, because, you know, it's highly anticipated for me at least. So anyways, yeah, I still loved it. I really enjoyed this game. I definitely recommend anyone who wants to play it, like who are into that visual novel kind of game. So yeah, and then uh, so like, tune in next time you guys for more of my Let's Play, other Let's Play. My gosh, I have done, I finished Doki Doki Literature. Until then you guys, I will see you then. So bye!